This lesson is for section 14.1. This is actually just day one of three for a concept called mathematical induction. So we're going to use mathematical induction um, to write proofs. We're going to start off with some easy ones today and then work our way to inequalities. And then finally, we're going to write some proofs about factors on uh, the third day. So just to introduce you to this idea of mathematical induction, I'm going to start with um, a few slides and ask you a couple questions. So I want you to consider this circle here with n number of points on it. Now, if you were to connect uh, these two points to create a chord, how many regions does this uh, circle get divided into? Well, here you can clearly see that we have two regions now. Um, two points created two regions. Now, when I create a third point, I now have four regions. And a fourth point, eight regions. A fifth point gives me 16 regions. Okay. Now, I want to ask you, how many regions would there be if there were six points on the circle? So perhaps because you're seeing maybe a pattern here, you're thinking that there might be 32 regions. Um, so this is something that isn't proven, right? It's just a conjecture. And in fact, this conjecture is actually wrong. There's actually only 31. If you were to actually draw this out, you're going to see only 31 uh, regions. So patterns don't necessarily hold true. Now what you're going to see is that you can never prove a conjecture by just examples. Okay? You can prove a conjecture that is false by finding a counterexample, like what we just saw. Counterexample would be when we, when we use six points. It's no longer 32 regions. Um, but basically, when you want to prove something, you need some formal methods of proof. And one of the methods that we're going to study today is the principle of mathematical induction. Okay. Now, to illustrate how induction works, I want you to imagine that you're climbing an infinitely high ladder. Now, how would you know whether you're able to reach a really high rung? Well, what we're going to do is, is assume two things about your climbing abilities. One, we're going to assume that you can definitely reach the first rung. Now, our second assertion is that once you can get to any rung, you can always climb to the next one up. Now, notice that if both statements are true, then by statement one, you can get to the first one, and then by statement two, you're going to be able to get to the second, and then again, by statement two, you can get to the third rung, or the fourth rung, and then the fifth, etc., etc. So, in other words, you can climb as high as you want. Now, both of these assertions, though, have to be true in order for you to get anywhere on this ladder. If only statement one is true, you have no guarantee that you could get beyond the first rung. Now, if only statement two is true, that you can only climb to the next one, you have no idea if you can even get started. So that's really the idea behind mathematical induction. Now that you have the general concept for mathematical induction, we're going to actually show you the formal setup for writing a proof by induction. Now, a mathematical proof by induction for any proposition P of n, so any conjecture that you make, we're going to call that P of n. If you want to show that it's true for every positive integer, in other words, a natural number, you might also see it just written as a natural number, um, it consists, consists of exactly two steps, like we talked about in the latter example. First, you have to show a base case. You want to show that your proposition, P of 1, we're going to call that, is true. So we must state that p of 1 is true. Like for example, that you can reach the first rung. Now, your inductive step, this part is where you're going to assume that p of k is true for any arbitrarily chosen positive integer k. In other words, we're going to assume that we can, once we get to a rung, we can get then to the next rung and show that under the assumption that p of k plus 1 must be true. So once we assume we're on the ladder here at p of k, we can get to the next rung, p of k plus 1. All right, that's our inductive step. Then, from those two steps, we then conclude, and this is by the principle of mathematical induction, that for any positive integer n, or natural number, that p of n is true. So here we're going to start off with the first example. Now, these are definitely not easy. I don't want you to think that these are easy, but these examples here that we're going over are going to be the easier of the three types of proofs that we're going to see. So this is something totally brand new for you guys, and I totally get if you under, you know have some trouble with understanding this. So make sure that tomorrow in class you're really clear about what questions you still have after going through these examples, because after this, um, it's, it, it will pick up in difficulty. So let's begin with our first example. So in example one here, it says to use mathematical induction to show that this following statement is true for any natural number. Now what this statement is saying is that if n were to equal, let's say 5, 
then I would read this statement as 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the terms up to 5, up to the fifth term is equal to 5 times oops, 5 plus 1 divided by 2. Now, what we are wanting to show is that this is true for any natural number. So we're going to begin with our principle of mathematical induction, which is to first begin with the base step. And our base step here is to show that p of 1 is true. So this is our statement p of n. Okay. In order to prove p of n is true, we first need to start with our base step, that p of 1 is true. So when we use our n equal to 1, we have 1 is equal to 1 times 1 plus 1 over 2, which is 1 times 2 over 2, which clearly is equal to 1, and this checks off. So we're done with our base step. Now our inductive step is a little bit trickier. For our inductive step, we want to show, assuming that p of k is true, we want to show, and I'm going to probably abbreviate this from now on as WTS. Okay, I want to show that p of k plus 1 is true. All right, so what we're going to do is actually swap out n and k. So notice that when I'm writing this, I no longer have p of n. I'm now replacing that with a k um, and showing that p of k plus 1 is true. So if I start with uh, my, my beginning statement, p of k. p of k is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all of the terms up to the kth term is equal to k times k plus 1 over 2. Um, and I want to show that 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all of the terms up to the kth term plus the k plus 1 term is equal to k plus 1 times k plus 1 plus 1, right? This is my substituted k plus 1 value in here, divided by 2. So I'm actually going to clean this side up a little bit. I'm going to show what that is equivalent to. So if I clean that up a bit, this is k plus 1 times k plus 2 over 2, which is simply k squared plus 2k plus 2, I'm sorry, 3k plus 2 when I FOIL that out over 2. Now on the left-hand side, this is, again, just 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus all the terms up to the k plus 1 term. So it's taking quite a bit of time to write all this out. But this is essentially what a proof is going to be. It's a lot of written work. All right, now, on the left-hand side, this is what I'm, I'm assuming to be true. I'm assuming that my p of k, my proposition is true for uh, any value of k. Okay, so um, some of you might like to write this as an if-then statement to kind of tie this into what you did and saw in geometry. But if I have this, then I'm wanting to show that this is true here. All right, essentially... This is equivalent to here. Now, I can only start with an assumption um, that I know to be true. So I'm going to start with this P of K, this left-hand side here. What I want to work to do is to make it look like this so that I can show that it's also true for this. So I'm starting with this left-hand side and trying to manipulate it to look like this. So what I'm going to do on the left-hand side is add a K plus 1 to the left-hand side. Now I can do that, but I must also add to the right hand side a k plus 1 as well. So I've just balanced the equation here, but now the left hand side of this equation looks exactly like this side. So I'm in good, you know, I'm heading in the right direction. Now all that's left to do is to show that this is somehow equivalent to this. So let's work on that. What we are going to do is algebraically manipulate the right-hand side in order to look like the right-hand side over here. So this is now k times k plus 1 over 2 plus, I'm going to rewrite this as 2 times k plus 1 over 2. So now that I can write that as a combined fraction, I can simplify that as k squared plus k plus 2k plus 2 over 2 which is equal to k squared plus 3k plus 2 over 2. Now if you're noticing, and I'm just going to 
recopy all of this left hand side down. This should be copied throughout. I'm being a little bit lazy. You you should not be lazy when you're when you're writing your own proofs. But notice that now I have shown that the right hand side here is equivalent to what I'm also trying to show. So now that I have that this is true, so essentially I've just shown by taking p of k, I've manipulated it so that p of k plus 1 is true. Therefore, for any p of n, I'm sorry, for any natural number, p of n is true. And this is my last statement here that I must include. So after I've done my inductive, inductive step, now this whole step here is actually your inductive step here. Um, after you've stated that, you're going to make your final statement, which, which is to say that p of n is true. And you can add in p of n is true for all natural numbers. Okay. Now just to kind of reinforce what we just did, I just want to review. What we did in English, just in plain old English, what we did is first we showed that something worked for the first time. We showed that p of 1 is true. And then we assumed that it worked for this time. And then by showing that it would work for the next time, we can draw the conclusion that it works all the time. So that was the last statement that we made that p of n is equal to, or that p of n is true for any natural number. Now, in math terms, what we did was first we showed that it is true for n equals 1. We assumed that it was true for n equals k, and we showed that it was true for when n is equal to k plus 1. So our conclusion is that it's true for all natural numbers. Now, these are the four steps that I'm going to look for when I award. Um, credit for any of your proofs. So they're usually going to be four point proofs and you need to show each of those four things. Alright, let's take a look at example two. So using mathematical induction, let's prove that this statement also holds true for all natural numbers. So let's start with our base step. And our base step here is that we want to show that p of 1 is true, that p of 1 holds. So is 1 squared equal to 1 times 2 times 1 minus 1 multiplied by 2 times 1 plus 1 all over 3. Well, if I manipulate this here, I end up with, or evaluate this, I end up with 1 times 2 minus 1 is 1, multiplied two by 2 plus 1, which is 3, over 3. And this is equal to 1, which is certainly equal to the left-hand side here. 1 squared is also equal to 1. So this holds. Now, for our inductive step, We want to show, we're going to assume, I should say, that p of k is true, but that we want to show that p of k plus 1 is also true. So we're going to start with our assumption here that p of k is true. Now our p of k is that 1 squared plus, let me scroll up a little bit, plus 3 squared plus 5 squared plus all of the terms up to you know, 2k minus 1 squared is equal to k times 2k minus 1 times 2k plus 1 all over 3. So notice again that I swapped out the n and the k. Now we want to show that if this is true then 1 squared plus 3 squared plus 5 squared plus the 2k minus 1 squared term plus the next term, which would be 2 times k plus 1 minus 1 squared is equal to, let's scroll back a little bit, k plus 1, so again I'm just substituting k plus 1 in here for each n, multiplied by 2 times k plus 1 minus 1, multiplied by 2 times k plus 1 plus 1 all over 3. So this is essentially what we want to be able to show, but we must start with the left hand side this assumption here. So again we want to manipulate this, this equation here, okay, this formula here to look like this. So I'm going to look at how they differ. Well on the right hand side, or this, this statement here, our then statement here, 2k plus 1, I have this term here added to the left hand side. So that's what I'm going to do to the left hand side here. I'm going to add a 2 times k plus 1 minus 1 squared term. So I'll have 1 squared plus 3 squared plus
plus 5 squared plus this 2k minus oops, 2k minus 1 squared plus now this additional term that I'm going to add okay equal to let's rewrite the right hand side so we can't write this okay most of you're going to want to try doing something like that but you have to start with your assumption and only so kind of ignore the right hand side here we're going to focus on this side and try to manipulate it to make it look like the right hand side over here so I now I'm going to take this part here k times 2k minus 1 multiplied by 2k plus 1 over 3 and to balance the fact that I've added this term here I must add that to this side as well so let's focus on this I'm going to add 2 times k plus 1 minus 1 squared here now since my left hand side here looks like the left hand side here I'm halfway there now the only thing that I need to do is somehow show that the right hand side that this is equivalent to this and I'm going to do that algebraically by manipulating this side so I'm going to be able to add these fractions if I can get a common denominator here so I have 3 times 2 times k plus 1 minus 1 squared over 3 okay so what I'm gonna do here is actually um, just multiply all these terms out okay I'm also gonna multiply all of these terms out here as well um, on the right hand side and just write this equivalently uh, just so I can get rid of all these 2k's and k plus 1's and all that so um, let's work on this side first so this is k plus 1 multiplied by if I if I distribute this 2 here I have 2k plus 2 minus 1 which is just going to be 2k plus 1 and then 2k plus 2 plus 1 is going to be 2k plus 3 over 3 now I would have to multiply and foil all of this out and this is equal to 4k cubed plus 12k squared plus 11k plus 3 so I did that work off to the side already um, so you would you would normally have to do that and show somewhere where you're making this step here alright so essentially these are equivalent right or they are equivalent so I want to manipulate this side here in order to make it look like this so I'm going to multiply here as well and I have uh, 2k squared minus 1 times 2k plus 1 is going to be 4k squared minus 1 so I have k times 4k squared minus 1 over 3 plus over here I have 3 times this is the same as 2k plus 1 squared so I have 3 times uh, 4k squared plus 4k minus 1 I'm sorry plus 1 alright all over 3 so uh, just combining now my numerators I have 4k cubed minus k plus 12k squared plus 12k plus 3 over 3 which is equivalent to 4k cubed plus 12k squared plus 11k plus 3 all over 3 so in fact I did get this to equal this so what I have shown is that through assuming that p of k is true and adding this term to both sides and showing algebraically that this is equivalent to this side of my then statement, my conclusion statement here, p of k plus 1. So I've shown that these are actually equivalent to each other. Now I can make my fourth and final step here. And my fourth and final step is to say that since p of k plus 1 is true, then p of n is true for every natural number all right that is the end of this lesson we are going to do um, examples in class tomorrow so get ready to work